Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the next clump in our ongoing series of Eugene Ormandy recordings on RCA after he jumped ship, after he left Columbia and sort of redid everything, but with some things he hadn't done before, some things better, some things worse. And uh, here is our clump du jour. This is the Japanese RCA edition of Ormandy stuff. And there was a lot of it. This is about, I don't know, 40 or 50 CDs worth of things here. And we begin with Bizet, Carmen, Larly Zien. Everyone does it. Everyone does it well, really, most of the time, don't they? And uh, the fact of the matter is Ormandy did all this stuff before. Um, it's very good, as you might expect. It's characterful. It's punchy. It's really well played. And I like the fact that on the first Carmen Suite, he begins with the fate motive and then ends with Les Toriadors, the Act One prelude. You know, jump da 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 Everyone usually begins with that. Well, he ends with it. It makes a very good ending to the first suite. So it's a nice disc. I mean, you know, we've got a million of them, but it's a nice disc. Also in the been there, done that department. Tchaikovsky, Patatik Symphony, and Francesca de Rimini. This Francesca is better than his first one, the Sony one. I think it's better recorded, first of all. Um, it has more clarity. I like the way he handles the coda, which is, you know, you really ought to just speed up and go insane. But if you're not going to speed up and go insane, which he doesn't, um, then to keep the tempo steady but really articulate is a very, very good thing. I mean, there's so many instances where you hear wonderful playing from the strings, accentuation and, and, and rhythm and phrasing and all these things that we don't pay much attention to. We want to have just like noise. I love noise. I mean, don't get me wrong. Noise is good. But, but there is real artistry here as well. Um, and the same is true, of course, of the Potatik Symphony, which is the main item here, to which he always did very, very well. And it's a beautiful performance of that. Sensitive and powerful by turns. Really very good. Then we've got Sibelius. Oh, my goodness. We just talked about Ormandy Sibelius' first symphony in the best recordings ever. Now, here is his other Sibelius first, the one that came later. And it isn't as much fun as the first one. It's a very good performance. Don't get me wrong. He always did it well. It's very well done, but it's it's just a little slower and a little bit less voluptuous because I don't think he messes with the orchestration quite so much and it's not recorded the same way. So it's good. It's a good, solid performance, but it isn't like fabulous like it ought to be. But you do get the Karelia Suite, which is very well done, and the Karelia Overture, which was an incredible rarity um, at the time, and it still is. It's 10 minutes and it's got the, the march in it. You know, the da da dum bum bum ba da dum bum bum ba da dum bum bum bum. That's in the overture as well. Um, so it's got some bits of things to come. Ormandy was good that way. You know, he was always looking for, for interesting bits of repertoire that he hadn't done before that were, you know, congenial to him. It wasn't like he was picking uh, people that were never heard of and doing really rare repertoire, but he did do unusual repertoire within the confines of the you know, classical, you know, composers who he really did well. So, and he always did Sibelius well. So that was kind of a novelty. That's in there. And then what's this? Oh, Tchaikovsky. Now, this was a series, you see. It was Tchaikovsky's Greatest val Ballets. This is volume three, Sleeping Beauty. So he did the Nutcracker, extended excerpts. He did he did Swan Lake extended excerpts, and now we have the Sleeping Beauty Suite extended excerpts, really, um, because it's a 50, 58, 58 minutes, I think. it's Really, that's that long. It's a big chunk of it. Hang on a second. Where is this thing? Here it is. 54.27. There we go. Um, that's a lot of Sleeping Beauty. In fact, it's probably more Sleeping Beauty than most people want, um, at least back in the day when suites were all the rage and buying a complete two and a half hour ballet and sitting down listening to the whole thing would have been considered slightly eccentric. So it's a very nice performance of that stuff. I mean, Tchaikovsky, I mean, he was his meat and potatoes. More Tchaikovsky. Oh, yes. 1812 Overture. This is the anti in the Igor Bukatov version. That is, it has, aside from the extra brass bands, it's got the choral parts, which Tchaikovsky never wrote, and which I detest. Yuck. I wish they weren't there. So I don't like this. And, you know, it's not 
It's not a stunningly fabulous recording. It's okay. And you've got Wellington's victory with electronic cannon. I mean, as if it matters. Uh, the Wellington's victory is a good performance. It's better than the 1812 because it doesn't have people singing, um, which is like, thank God, not. And then we've got Grieg, Pyrgin Suites 1 and 2, with uh, Judith Blagan on hand to sing Solveig's song at the very end. And Judith Blagan's wonderful, and it's, those are beautiful performances. Lovely. So it's sort of a nice disc, except for the thing that they're trying to sell. See that? 1812. You know, the more glop you put on it, you know, the more, you know, bigger and noisier it gets. But I do not like it with those choral parts. No, no, no. I just want to hear brass and cannons and bells and things all going crazy. That's more than good enough for me if you record it really well. So there you have it. Five more Ormandy goodies and there are more to come. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me and take care.